The Nikon D3500 is fun to use and simple to operate. Its 24.2 megapixel format allows you to capture high quality images effortlessly. A light and balanced body lets you take it with you wherever you go. Continuous shooting of 5 frames per second, in combination with its 11-point focusing system, the D3500 captures moving images with ease. The Bluetooth connectivity lets you use your smart device as a remote trigger to capture the images and then automatically transfers those images from the camera to your phone. The ISO range of up to 25,600 captures beautiful images throughout the day. ADP high definition video by activating the live view mode and pressing the record button. Capture your best moments with the Nikon D3500. The new Lumix G7, the one introducing 4K to everyone, latest 4K processing, and mirrorless technology in a compact and intuitive design, providing touch focus technology with the latest high-speed autofocusing, recording video in stunning 4K resolution. And now, with the new 4K photo, you can extract, show and save the perfect frame out of a 4K video sequence easily on the camera. Never miss a perfect moment. The new Lumix G7, the one introducing 4K to everyone. This is Goethe, and this is her father, Bosho. They live here in the town of Molonat, along Croatia's Dalmatian coast, just south of Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik is an ancient walled city, situated along the rolling green hills of olive trees and the clear blue water of the Adriatic Sea. It is straight from the scenes of Game of Thrones, both literally and figuratively. Gerta and her family run a bar in the old town of Dubrovnik, featuring wines from their family's vineyard and winery. Over the course of a week, we'll be spending time with amazing people like Gerta and her family and see a side of Croatia beyond the tourist circuit. Well here, we'll be shooting stills and video on the new Canon 5D Mark IV and diving into how I approach my work as an adventure travel photographer. So join me, photographer Max Lowe, as we explore Croatia's Dalmatian coast with the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. Dubrovnik, the pearl of the Adriatic. As the largest city along the southern coast of Croatia, it's a thriving hub of tourism, its port basically serving as a parking lot for luxury cruise liners. But 20 years ago, things were different. Following the breakup of former Yugoslavia, 
a series of conflicts spread through the region, igniting long-standing ethnic tensions. Dubrovnik narrowly escaped destruction, its walls repeatedly shelled. Today, Dubrovnik has made a stark rebound. Within the ancient walls, tourists mix with the locals in labyrinthine alleys and grand plazas. It is, to say the least, a great place to take photos. The Canon EOS 5D Mark IV is the latest iteration of Canon's iconic 5D series. It is built around a new 30.4 megapixel CMOS full-frame sensor. The 5D 4 now offers fast and accurate AF that extends to its live view and movie modes. Combined with its AI servo system, this means it can rapidly acquire and track objects selected by touch. The 5D Mark IV also features class-leading face detection capabilities, allowing for easy subject selection using the back joystick, a very handy feature for portrait sessions or shooting crowds of people. On the video end, the 5D Mark IV can shoot the standard 1080 frame rates, but also offers a super slow-mo HFR mode at 120 frames per second at 720p. It is now capable of shooting 4K video at up to 30p and has a built-in workflow for pulling stills from footage. In addition to these features, the 5D Mark IV has some other updates. The new 1.62 million dot touchscreen provides for very intuitive function control and image review, including the ability to pinch zoom. Raw images can be processed in camera and saved as JPEGs. Combined with its built-in Wi-Fi, Toned RAWs can be sent directly to a mobile device for upload. The outside has the solid weather-sealed build that world-traveling journalists and adventure lifestyle photographers have come to trust, a real asset when the rain starts to pour. It also features twin slots for compact flash and SD, which is handy when a parent tries to steal one of your cards. <laughs> With the sun setting over the Adriatic, we spent the last part of our first day shooting the churning waves, lapping the stoic walls of Dubrovnik's old town. Sunset and sunrise are the photographer's favorite hours, not only because of the light, but also because of the transitions and people's livelihoods. People work out of sight during the day, but in the morning and evening, locals come out to enjoy the beauty alongside everyone else giving you a chance to encounter those who call these foreign shores home. Croatia's Dalmatian coast is comprised of over a thousand islands. One of the most populated is Korčula, about an hour's drive north of Dubrovnik. To reach the island, you take a short ferry ride. Much like Dubrovnik, it's a walled city with the visible influence of Greek, Roman, and Hungarian civilizations. From atop the highest point in the city in a bell tower, we find a new perspective. The shadows of passerbys stretched out across the white stones of the plaza below. Korčula, like Dubrovnik, is where everyone goes. We were looking for something a little bit different though. So we roamed around for a while, looked at a map, drove down a random road that dead-ended into a small bay, and met these two, Philippe and Evita. Alongside Philippe and Evita, we got a first-hand look at a small artesian oyster farm. 
Uh, we're gonna see uh, mussel and oysters farm first. Here, on these barrels, which are used for uh, hanging a big rope, on which we hang the previously prepared mussels and oysters. Uh, we want to show you first uh, big oysters that we already prepared for. Oysters are a staple of this region in Croatia. Due to the unique salinity of the ocean's water, the flavor of the meat is said to be especially delicious. Down here we sink one uh, boat, and uh, old one, the wooden one, and we keep champagnes inside of them so they don't float on the surface. Here below the hanging oyster beds, they kept sparkling wine from the local vineyard, where the ocean's chill kept it equally cool year-round. Ivita and I, I'm gonna go down okay. and get some champagne that's stored in the underwater wine cellar. It's gonna be great. Maybe a little cold. Show me your muscle beds. <laughs> <laughs> He's diving, getting the bottles from the boat. Did I repeat correctly? Sorry. It's good, it's good, man. <laughs> awesome, thanks, man. Twenty thirteen sparkling white wine pulled off the bottom of the ocean here, where it's been stored for the last few years. We're gonna pop it open for dinner. See how it tastes. It's got some little crushed leaves on there. Naturally, we wanted to get a taste of the sea's bounty. So clad in his finest red mankini, Evita pulled in a haul of oysters that were ready for shucking. Using the lowering sun, I was able to make some great backlit environmental portraits of him at work. One of the most important considerations when shooting lifestyle photography is setting the scene. It's an often overlooked element. What separates the pros from the amateurs is the ability to basically art direct and consider everything that's in the frame. The reality is that the travel photography that you often think of as pure documentary is nothing of the sorts. It's an intentional staging of the real world around us to create the scene you want, to tell the story you want to tell. With our catch in hand, it was time for dinner. I think we have to pop the bottle, right? That's your yeah. that's your job. Oh, I think I got that. <laughs> How do you say cheers again in Croatian? Cheers. Here, see you guys. Thanks again. This experience, getting a taste of local seafood pulled from the ocean before our eyes, and rubbing elbows with a family making a life they love in this amazing place, was possible only because we turned our eyes from the beaten path and went out on a limb to trust the warmth of strangers. If I was going to live in Croatia, I would live here, I think. Who knows, maybe I will someday. We can't, we can't rule it out. <laughs> What do you like about it here so much? Mostly everything. This piece, you know, the nature blending with uh, the sea, enjoying the fruits from it, you know, you know, the peace. Everything is clean, it's not polluted, you know. Where I see myself for 10 years, I'm really not sure, but I know what I'm going to do tomorrow. It was a magical evening 
and to think that it came out of taking a chance and driving down a random road reminds me just how important it is to talk to strangers, which is exactly how we met Gerda and her family. So back to where we started, a picturesque winery overlooking the Adriatic Sea, where Bosho grows grapes that embody the very taste of Croatia, or at least the minerals and earthy tones that come from its soil. My name is Bojo Metković, and I living in Molunat, Croatia. Why is this place where you chose to build your vineyard? This uh, place is have a very special uh, position. All day you have sunshine, and the uh, ground is be very special. It's a cool contrast. Yeah. After exploring the vineyard, we met up with Gerda to learn a bit about the types of wines that the Metkovic family produces. So basically we are in our family uh, wine cellar and now we're here to try some wine. Great. Okay. Mm, including sparkling and the sweet wines that are 14 gotcha. different wines. So uh, we have the white sparkling, we have reds, we have rosé, we have also some whites. And we do also produce two sweet wines. Bosho's pride in his craft is obvious. Using the diffuse light in the doorway, I shot some portraits of Gerda. Then it was time for more food at the family's restaurant alongside the lapping ocean, where Gerda's sister, an award-winning chef, runs the show. This time, it was steak, fish, and of course, more wine. Before we left, we gathered everyone for a family photo. On our last day, before heading to the airport, we took one last detour. We are in the former Hotel Belvedere, which was one of the biggest hotels in Dubrovnik, very popular in former Yugoslavia, but now it's abandoned and it's empty, big, interesting. The hotel stands as a remnant to a different era. Mm, I was two years old when the war started, so I don't really remember anything of it. Luckily, my mother and I went to Germany. My father was partly here. How was he affected by it? Mm, he didn't tell very much about it to us. He really never told any war stories um, because I think it affected him very much, but he didn't want us to be affected the way he was. Gerda and I explored the ruins using the dramatic light and backdrop to create some of my favorite images from the trip. These people, the generation of my father and this oyster guy, they actually built up businesses from nothing. They had to start all over again. I mean, of course you're proud then. I'm proud of, my, of what my family built and of what we built together. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. It's a bit kitschy, but uh, I like it. Throughout our journey in this small corner of Croatia, through the eyes of those who live each day amidst this beautiful landscape, we got a glimpse of the magic that shimmers beyond the path most traveled. And through the power of photography, got the chance to explore that. For DP Review, I'm Max Lowe.